to five people before you have a seat. (laughs) You know, one day we'll get to shake hands again, and I'm super excited about that. And hug and all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and watch some video announcements. Hello, everyone, and welcome to First Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Tyler, and we are so glad that you chose to spend a little bit of your weekend here with us. We're so excited to worship with you this morning and hear a word from our pastor. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the life of the church. We're excited to welcome all of our first time guests today. When you arrived, you should have received a welcome bag out in our lobby. Make sure you pick one of those up on your way out today and meet us in our connection room after service. Our staff and some of our team would love to connect with you. We hope you feel right at home here today. You can give your tithes and offering in a variety of ways this morning. You can give online at brokenbowfirst.org. There's baskets up here at the front or boxes designated in the back of the sanctuary. Thank you in advance for all of your giving and your faithfulness. Our Easter outreach, You've Been Egged, is coming up on Saturday, March 27th. This year, we will be setting up mini egg hunts door to door across our Broken Bow community. If you are able to help out these teams with our egg hunts, please sign up in the lobby. We are also needing your donations of candy, eggs, and prizes that you can put in the box out in the lobby. For more questions or any kind of concerns, you can talk to our children's pastor, Crystal Hoover. Our connect groups will be meeting again here at the church tonight at 6 p.m. It is not too late to jump in and join a connect group. If you have any questions, please see Denise Webb. Today is Juan Carlos Day. At the end of our service this morning, we will be taking a special love offering for Juan Carlos as he continues his fight with cancer. Juan is such a vital part of our Hispanic community and our church. Please prepare to give as we look to bless this wonderful man and his family. For more information on these or any other upcoming events or announcements, you can go to our website at brokenbowfirst.org. You can check us out on Facebook or you can watch us on YouTube. God bless you today. We hope you enjoy the rest of your service. verses out of Psalm 34 this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Church, let us exalt his name together. Because I sought the Lord and he answered me. And he rescued me from all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant with joy. Their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Skipping down to verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears open to their cry for help. The face of the Lord is set against those who do what is evil to remove all memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and rescues them from all of their troubles. The Lord is near the brokenhearted. He saved those crushed in spirit. One who is righteous has many adversities, but the Lord rescues him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord redeems the life of his servants, and all who take refuge in him will not be punished. God, we praise you and we thank you so much for your holy word and for your promises. That no matter our adversities, no matter what's happening all around us, Lord, you will save us. You are fighting for us. You have not left us. We are not here to walk alone. Your presence is here. Your spirit leads us and guides us, protects us. 
Lord, we worship you this morning. Thank you so, so much for your promises that never fail.
wrapping up our series and uh, starting a new series next week about Easter, but we're wrapping up our series on love, on real love, and uh, I've just been thinking, you know, love is a complex word, isn't it? It's a complex word. Uh, can somebody say amen? Yeah, it's, it's tough. I try to figure it all out. We don't understand it all. First Corinthians has been sort of our base uh, chapter for this study. First Corinthians chapter 13 is the famous love chapter. And uh, verse 4 through 8 of that chapter, I haven't touched on it too much this, this series, but verse 4 through 8 are uh, Paul's description of love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8, Paul goes into this listing of, of words that describe love. Love is patient, love is kind, and it goes on and on and on. So as we look in that, those words this morning, uh, are you ready for an English refresher course this morning? How many of you like English? Amen. I, I lo- it, was, it was one of my favorite classes in, in school. Uh, I loved I didn't say it was my best class in school. PE was my best class, but, uh, but it was one of my favorite classes in school. I love the breaking down of sentences. Now, you might not think English would be my gl- best class because sometimes we don't speak very good English, right? We have our own flavor of English, like McCurtney's or whatever, but... English was one of my favorite subjects because you get to break down those sentence structures a little bit and that kind of thing. And Miss V, if I do wrong here today, just forgive me, okay? I'm not real sure. It's been a while since I've been in school. My, my favorite uh, class in high school was English uh, because I had a teacher that really, really made it important. Her name was Mrs. Lee. Mrs. Lee. I still remember it. That's been 45 years ago probably. Uh, Mrs. Lee, more than that. Okay, more than that. Uh, Mrs. Lee was cool. She would, she would help you to break down the sentence structure and stuff, but, but she was a tough old burger. She, uh, she, and we called her General Lee. Um, and there, there was some reasoning behind that. She was a tough teacher. But uh, we're gonna, I'm going to do a little bit quick refresher on English this morning. Some of you may have flunked it, so this is your t- chance to redeem yourself this morning. Love... Is, a, is one of those rare words, one of those rare words in our vocabulary that can actually be a noun, a verb, an adverb, and an adjective. And there's not many words that, that can fit all of those things, but love can be a noun, a verb, an adverb, or adjective. Now, here we go. Nouns are what? They are a person, place, or a thing. Nouns are person, place, that's easy enough. You passed that one, didn't you? Everybody knows the noun. Person, place, or thing. A verb, are, a verbs are what nouns do. Verbs are what nouns do. They run, they jump, they shoot, they score. That's sort of a sentence there. Without, really, uh, without, without them, nothing actually happens. A, a noun doesn't do anything until it does. A noun isn't anything until it becomes a verb, it moves into verb form. So it does a person, place, or a thing, and it, then it's, it takes action to it. An adverb is how they do it, and how they do it. They are words that modify a verb. So a noun has action through a verb, and the adverb sort of modifies that verb. And that's pretty cool because I like, I like adverbs because I like modifying. I like modifying things. So it's like this right here. It's words like quickly or excitedly or softly. So a noun is a person, place, or thing that does something, and it does something in this particular manner, you know, quickly, excitedly, or softly. And an adjective describes things. Now, we talk in adjectives all the time because we say, man, that is so cool, or that is this, or that is that, or whatever the case might be. Uh, Frustrating, the other night I was driving in, and yesterday, I think it was, and it was foggy driving in. By the time I got home, it got foggy. And what my favorite time of year is, is when it's sunny, sunny. So a noun is a, I mean, the, the, the word love is a noun, verb, adverb, or an adjective. The word noun can, the word love can be used as a noun, as in all you need is love, 
That's a noun. All you need is love makes, makes that word a noun. A verb is in this right here. I love Kim. I love Kim. That's a verb. I love Kim. Now, are you ready for this one? An adjective is when Kim affectionately loves bandit. <laughs> Say ooh. That's our little dog. And he's so cute. You can't help but affectionately love bandit. He's a lot different than the other dog we had. <laughs> he's a lot different than, than uh, the beast, Duke. But uh, bandit, you just can't help but affectionately love bandit. And he's so cool sitting there in front of the fireplace, so beautiful there, and so calm and gentle and loving. Hey, yeah. So in Paul's writing, 1 Corinthians, love is all those things. It's a, it's a noun, it's a verb, it's an adverb, it's an adjective as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8, Paul lists 16 verbs, 16 verbs in those four verses. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Then lastly, love, verse 8, love never ends. And in these verses, Paul gives us 16 verbs with this word, concerning this word love. And our English translations are a little bit different than that. We change and sometimes just the way we do things change verbs into adjectives. But in the Greek, they were all verbs. These words are all verbs. We might think of them as adjectives because they describe love. But the truth is they are all verbs. And I believe that's significant as I look at this a little bit. See, Paul begins with two verbs which describe what love is. What love is. Love is kind and love is patient. Secondly, it gives us a series of seven verbs which says what love is not. Love is not these things. And thirdly, it gives us a contrasting statement describing love. Love does not do this, but rather love does that. Love doesn't do this thing, but love does this thing. And fourth and finally, love, he breaks down four things that love always does. Love always does. In English, we have one word for love. We have one word for love. The ancient Hebrews did the same thing. They had the same dilemma. They had one word, ahave, for love. It was the ancient Hebrew word for love. All different shades of love had to be captured in that one single term. So, if I say I love Bandit, my dog, and I love Kim, that word love is the same thing. That means I love my dog as much as I love Kim. That ain't going to cut it. I'm going to tell you, that ain't going to work. And there's my English coming out right there, ain't it? That's not going to work. We, we have the tendency, there's only one word. Love is love, love. I love this. I love chocolate pie. I love coconut cream pie. I love OU sports. I love Kim. You see, it just loses its effectiveness when you say it that way. I surely love Kim more than I love OU football. I do. I do. But the Greeks, they understood that love has different meanings in different contexts. They have different meanings in different, different contexts. Remember last week I told you, I, I mentioned four words that the Greeks used of love. They used the word eros, which describes a passionate type of love, a romantic type of love. And then storge, which describes love between, and it's a natural love, and a love between family members. I love my sons and my, my daughter, and, and then the phileo love, phileos, and that speaks of a friendship love or a mutual affection love. So that, be, that could be like, I love you. I love you in that type of way. And then there was the word agape. Agape love was an unconditional love. It's a, it's a love that God used for us. The point that Paul is trying to make is that love is not always quite the way we say it is. It doesn't always come across the way we say this. So as Paul, as we study Paul's description, it becomes very clear that Paul, when he talks about love, he's not talking about this warm, fuzzy feeling, this, this fuzzy feeling of love. He's not talking about that. 
But rather, he's talking about, when he's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love, that's not warm and fuzzy things. That is love that is a decision. It's a, it's a conscious decision to love people no matter what. So I'm going to love you unconditionally no matter what. So love is a noun, but ultimately love is a verb. It's a verb. It's a word of action. Love, real love, manifests itself in action. It's not just spoken. You can't just say I love you and that, that's good enough. If I just told Kim I loved her, she'd be disappointed if I didn't somehow show her I loved her. If I didn't express that love to her in some manner, like let her maybe taking her to dinner or buying her something or, or whatever the case might be, it always manifests itself. Real love always manifests itself in action. Are y'all tired of me talking about me and Kim? She is. She told me, quit talking about us so much. Paul doesn't give us a flowery, flowery description of love. And that's how sometimes we, we describe love. We describe it in these romantic, flowery terms. And Paul's not telling us about what love is in some abstract tense or some way that uh, we can't understand. He tells us about love as love does. Love does. Love isn't primarily something you feel. We, have a, we, have, we feel love, but it's something you do. Something you do. And I'm excited to preach this today. I've been planning this for about a month or so, maybe more. I'm excited to preach this today because love does is what we're going to do today. Love does is what we're going to do today. I'm so excited that we're going to be receiving an offering for one of our, our members of our church who desperately needs some help financially. And we're going to come underneath that. And we're going to, I've told Juan Carlos repeatedly in this process that I love him. I'm praying for him. I've been in contact with him. Haven't gone and seen him because he doesn't want to see anybody. But I've sent him texts. I've called him and all those things to, to express my love to him. To tell him, hey, Juan Carlos, I love you. We're praying for you and all those things. You've done the same thing. But today, we get to tangibly reach out and express our love to Juan Carlos. And we're going to do that with what's in your back pocket. Amen? We're going to give him, we're going to give him some money. We're going, to, we're going to give him an offering. So love is more than just spoken words, but love is an action. It always finds ways to express itself for the good of other people. It does. It's an expression. First John chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 says, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Now think about that verse. If we have the capability of expressing love in some manner, some way, some tangible way of telling somebody or showing somebody that we love them, but we withhold that, the Bible John, the writer here, says, how is the love of God in you? If you have that ability to really make a difference in somebody's life, to share the love of God with somebody in some way, to do more than say, I love you, but to express that you love them, then if you hold that back, John was saying, how's the love of God in you? Then he goes on, little children, let us not love in word or in talk, but in deed and in truth. Don't just let it be an expression of our heart, but let it be an action that we follow through with. Love means opening our heart to the needs of those around us. Today, it's Juan Carlos, and other times in the past, it's been other members of our church. And in the future, it'll be even others in our church as we reach out to people that have needs. This is practical concrete acts of love in ordinary manners that we just share that with people. In ordinary manners. It may, it may seem like it's not much to you. And maybe today you can only give $10. Somebody else can give $100. Somebody else can give $500. There's some of you that can give $1,000. And it doesn't matter the size of the gift. Because when we give it to Juan Carlos, it's going to be one big check. 
And, and that little $10 is going to add in to the other $10 that somebody else gives or $50 or $100 or $500 or $1,000. And it's going to make a huge difference in his life. It's going to be the way that we have concrete acts of love showing to him. So John further describes the call of, to love others by saying, little children, let us not love in word or in speech. Because that's how we do that a lot. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Love is probably the most misused or overused, can I say, overused word in our vocabulary. We say something to somebody on Facebook, oh, I love you. Hey, I love you. Love and appreciate you. How many times do you know? Praying for you, love you. Today and in the future, we need to go beyond just saying I love you. Hey, buddy, I love you. Thinking about you. Since my note this week, hey, I, I love you. I'm thinking about you. You were just on my mind. I, that happens a lot. <clears throat> Somebody will be on my mind. I'll, I'll just stop what I'm doing and, and send them a text. Hey, I'm thinking about you. I, I love you. Praying for you. Whatever. Don't know if anything's going on in your life, but you, you just came to my mind. We need to do more than that, though. We do, that's just loving in speech and in word, but we need to love in action and in, and in truth. Love is not simply something we believe, but love is something that does. Real love does. It does something. It's not pious talk, but it's committed action. Love sees the pain and suffering and the hurts and the needs of a neighbor and reaches out to meet that need. Love does something about it. It's more than just saying, hey, I, see, I know you're hurting. I know you're hurting. I know you're going through things. It's doing more than that. Love does something. It's practical. It's practical and it's concrete. The problem is we know we should love others. We know we should love others. And we really, deep down in our heart, we want to do something. We, do, we want to do something to show that love. But this is what happens. This is what happens. Oftentimes we fail to act on that. We fail to act on it. We say it. We acknowledge the need there. We, we acknowledge that we need, need to do something. Come on. Yeah, I know I need to do something. But we fail to act on it. We fail to act on that. We fail to act on our intentions. You know, the road to some place is paved with good intentions. Right? Love is seeing a need and meeting that need. It's seeing a need and meeting that need. It's going beyond just saying, hey, I know you're going through something. Praying for you. It's doing something tangible to make a difference. And how do I know love does? How do I know that love really does? Because Jesus did. That's the, that's the example we follow. I know love does because Jesus did. Because Jesus did. If love is anything, it can be boiled down to a, a single word. Love is a decision. It's a decision. You have to make a decision. Love is not something you feel because sometimes you don't feel like loving. Come on. Sometimes you, don't feel, sometimes you don't feel like loving. Sometimes you don't love me. Maybe I did something wrong and you don't like it, so you don't love me. Sometimes I don't love you. Sometimes I don't love bandit. Sometimes he's lovable. The other night he jumped up my lap and was just sitting in my lap looking right at my face like, and cocking his head back and forth like, you're so cool. I love you, Daddy. He just so cool. And I just love, reached over and loved him, just loved on him. But do you know there's other times he jumps up my lap and I meet my Snickers. And I don't want to share it with him. And I don't love him, so I, I spank him and get him down. I send him on his way or whatever the case may be. Sometimes we love and sometimes we don't love. It's a decision that we make in our life. You know, the best verse to illustrate that love is your favorite verse and the, and the Bible's most famous verse, John 3, 16. How do I know that God loves? Because God loves us through his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God does, did what? He so loved. He, he could have been in heaven and he said, man, I love those folks down there. They are so good. They always mind me. They always do what I ask them to do. They always are obedient. We know that's not the truth. But he, didn't, he did more than just say, I love you so much. He says, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God love, God's love wasn't just something he felt for us, but it was something he did for us. He gave, he gave. He gave his only son. He gave his only son. He sent his son to die on an old record cross for you and I. Now, what is love? The Bible always points to love is this way right here. Always. Everything about the Bible from beginning to the end. I was reading in Leviticus, that, famous, that favorite book in the Bible. Uh, Leviticus, I was, it's in my devotion, so if I'm going to read the Bible through, I've got to read it, right? And I was reading it this, this week, and, and I'm right in the middle of it, just, or just started it, I guess, and uh, it's really boring. Come on, anybody think Leviticus is boring? Anybody think Leviticus is exciting? Yeah, there ain't nobody. Nobody thinks Leviticus. You almost wonder, God, why did you put it in there? I mean, it's, it's the most boring book in the Bible. Why did you even put it in there? Because you know we're going to skip it, right? You know we're going to skip it. Right? Because you skip it, right? When you're reading the Bible, you skip Leviticus because it's just, it's just a bunch of rules and regulations. But did, did you know that it just dawned on me this morning that because I was reading it today, that all of those rules and regulations point to the cross. <laughs> Gee, every bit of it. All those sacrifices, he's talking about the offerings, these offerings, if you're going to do this offering, do that offering, do this offering, do that offering, they all point to the cross of Calvary. That every one of them, what is love? Everything in the Bible points to God's love for us. It points to the cross. And there, there Jesus on that cross, he did what was best for us. He did what was best for us, no matter what the cost was. And it cost him his life. That's love. It's love in the most pure and powerful expression. There is no other expression better than that love. Real love, God's love, is, demonstra is a demonstrated love. It does something about it. He didn't merely just say, I love you, but he went along and showed us proof of his love. The love of God is living and it's active and he showed it's tangible and it's, it's recognizable because he showed us on the cross of Calvary that he loves us. The cross of Jesus is God's way of expressing his love for us. He could have done it 10,000 different ways. He could, have, he could have given, showed his love to us by giving us a pot load, a load of gold. I mean, I, wouldn't you take that? My kids like it when I give them money. So you, as God's kid, would have loved him to bestow his love on you by giving you some money, giving you a bucket load of gold, right? You wouldn't turn it down. But that wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been satisfactory. It wouldn't have been satisfying just for a moment, but it wouldn't have lasted eternally. But God did something for us that's eternal. He gave us his son. He showed us his love by expressing his love to us on the cross. And that's how much he loved us. That's how much he loved us. He loved us so much that he gave himself. He gave himself for us. He didn't just talk about loving you. He didn't just say I love you, but he proved how much he loves us by giving his son for us. By coming to earth as a human being and then by living and dying on a cross for you and I. He didn't just stop by saying, hey, I love you. I love you, Terry. I love you, Sue. I love you, Carol. No, he went beyond that. He expressed his love through an act in response. It's an act of response. He had a love that does. A love that does. I cut my message short because I want to do communion. I want to give, give us time to do the offering for Juan Carlos. But I want you to understand love is more than words. It's more than a noun. It's a verb. It's a verb in saying that he loves us, that he expressed his love for us through Calvary's cross. I've been speaking on 1 Corinthians 13 for the last couple of weeks, I guess. 1 John chapter 3 and 4. And, I, and, and I've been talking primarily to us as believers because that's who this, that's who this letter, 1 Corinthians 13, was written to the church. It's written to the church, not to the lost humanity, it's written to the church. 
But let me say a word right now to you. Maybe you've never acknowledged your sin. It really became fresh to me as I was reading Leviticus. So I was just the, 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 the offering, the, the cost that went into providing for those sacrifices. Maybe you've never really acknowledged your need of a Savior. Maybe you've never trusted in the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. We think about it this time of year because it's getting near Easter and we think about that. But Maybe you've never really let it go deep into your spirit. If that's you this morning, and I want you to know you, can't exp- you cannot express your love to others without accepting his love for you. Your love will be shallow without first accepting his love for you, what he did for you. So I urge you this morning to, under, to consider the, the awesome reality of what Christ did. His love for us, God's expressed love for us in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary. May you trust in him as your Lord and your Savior this morning.